Hello my friends, hello it's Matthew Street and welcome to my channel as always I truly appreciate you being here and folks how can something that is supposed to be so professionally planned go so horribly wrong? How can it get so messed up where security is screwed up and public safety is screwed up and when you when you plan a large event and you have professionals EMS, police, fire, government officials who are planning a large event and they're supposed to be well-trained, highly trained and motivated. They're supposed to plan for everything. The safety of the attendees to that event is supposed to be of the utmost importance. Also, the safety of the players on the field or the court or the performers, uh, that their safety is of the utmost importance. And also the safety of the first responders, that they don't don't get hurt while they're uh, participating in a big, large-scale event, public event. How does it get so screwed up where the there's such poorly staffed police, EMS, ambulance, fire, officials, so screwed up, so messed up that the, the potential risk just skyrockets and, and people's lives could be potentially in danger. How do government, well, <laughs> do I need to sit here and ask how can government officials screw something like that up? <laughs> you know, because our government officials are just so <laughs> top notch, right? <laughs> All right, just a joker, folks. But seriously, you know, I worked in the security field a long time ago, you know, with being involved in events, you know, and I'm sure many of you worked in a large scale events, whether you worked in concessions or were part of a security force at a large scale event, like a sporting event or a concert or whatnot. So you know what I'm talking about and how much planning and goes into it. It's like you have to have a command center and know what's going on and, and commu good communications and, and, oh, well, now go back to 1964, and you are a fan, a young Beatles fan, and you've got your ticket all ready for the big United States large-scale 1964 Beatles U.S. tour. And I just have a replica ticket here of the Boston concert concert from that uh, tour. But you got your ticket, you got some of your Beatles memorabilia in these replica faux 64 buttons you got your buttons all ready to go on your thing you got your ticket you're all set you even as you arrive at the venue you buy the 1964 beatles tour program here is a replica one i have a real one but this is a replica one right here you've got your tour program oh my god i'm going to see the beatles it's tonight Oh, I can't wait. All oh, the Beatles are coming. I can't wait. I'm going to see the Beatles. The Beatles are here. And I've got my tour book and I'm ready. And it's September 16th, 1964. And you are from New Orleans or in the greater Louisiana, New Orleans area. And you are going to see the Beatles at City Park Stadium. Yes, September 16th, 1964. And there's 12,000 fellow attendees to this Beatles concert. And you cannot wait. You got your ticket. You get there early. You're all dressed up, ready to go. You're looking sharp, going to see the Beatles. And then you get there. And it's typical exciting atmosphere. There's concessions and people are buying food and popcorn and soda. And they're buying the tour program and they're buying Beatles memorabilia. And the radio, local radio stations are getting everyone pumped up for the, the show. And you're excited. And oh my God. And you know, you're sitting there in the stands. You're eating your popcorn, drinking your soda. And you're looking out at the stand. Go, wow. This is interesting. All the fans are arriving. But we're all, you know, we're all sitting in this outer horseshoe bank of stands around this field. It's like track and field field. And, whoa, there's the stage at the end there. And, wow, it doesn't look too big, does it? Looks like it's made of wood. Gee, it's only three feet high off the ground. <laughs> three feet. <laughs> That's not, not much, right? And know, it looks like there's a couple of rows of chairs in front of the stage, maybe about 50 or so sitting there in front of the stage. Oh, that's interesting. Geez, how come there's tw almost 12,000 of us gathered in this big horseshoe loop around the field, but there's nobody on the field? You know, it kind of looks like this. And here's some good Matthew Street technology coming in now. Here's the field. Here's City Park Field in New Orleans. And as you can see, that's the scoreboard. 
this line here is a scoreboard. Now there is the wooden little wooden stage, three feet high. Only three feet high, made of wood. The Beatles are going to be playing on there. Oh my goodness. And there's just a couple of rows of seats right in the front. Maybe enough for like 50 people or so. Uh, people that won the radio station contest are allowed to sit there. Obviously disabled people or people in, you know, wheelchairs are allowed to sit here. But then you got this gigantic big field. Picture like a big track. You know, a running track for track and field goes around it. In the middle, it's big enough where you can play football or soccer, whatever you want. And here's where we're sitting. A big bank of stands at City Park Stadium in New Orleans. 12,000 people are jammed into this horseshoe right there. All right, now what do you think of that? Okay, it looks pretty cool. Beatles are coming. And that's it, okay? Well, I don't know how they planned events back in 1964. Government officials, police, fire, EMS. <laughs> but boy, they really screwed this one up big time, big time. Because 1964 Beatles U.S. tour was crazy. Beatlemania was in an unreal fashion, unreal manner. You know, uh, the Beatles are arriving, and it's it's pandemonium. People are screaming. Oh, by the way, they got to meet Fats Domino, one of their musical heroes, just prior to the show in their trailer. Just prior to the show, they met up with Fats Domino. It was a big highlight for them on the tour. That's great. They were only paid like $20,000 for this show. Think about it, $20,000. I don't even know if they got all of that or if some of it had to go to fees or whatever. Okay, so we know the whole gig. I got a couple of, you know, Beatles at the Hollywood Bowl here from the 64 tour. We know the set list, pretty much what they played in Louisiana on that night in September of 64. Now, the Beatles come on stage and it's absolute pandemonium, crazy, nutty, okay? I, there's very few pictures of this show. You can go search. You can certainly get pictures of the stadium and what exactly the Beatles come on stage from their trailer. And folks, it's absolute pandemonium nuts, nuts, nuts. Now, what do you think happens when you're understaffed with police, ambulance, fire, not enough police lining here, not enough police here, not enough here, not enough here, not enough here? What do you think's going to happen? <laughs> well, only a few minutes into the show, the fans rush the field from these stands. Why wouldn't they? I would. You would. You're sitting up here. There's the Beatles at the end of the field. This is wide open. A big soccer, football-style field, wide open. You see these lucky blokes up here sitting, getting like, you know, real close front row seats to the Beatles, and you're back here? Well, of course you're going to rush the field. You're going to say, there's open space here, open real estate. I can get closer to the Beatles, so... Hundreds, they said, I'm surprised all 12,000 didn't do it. Hundreds of fans rushed the field, rushed the field. That was it, with their little $5 tickets in hand. <laughs> That's what it cost to see the Beatles then. So the fans rushed the field going towards the stage. Now, the police tried to stop them, but I'm going to tell you right now, they were completely outnumbered, totally outnumbered. And it was absolute pandem pandemonium, folks. Fans were fainting. People, there was like a crush, you know, like people trying to get close to the stage and trying to dodge each other. And, and it was just madness, Beatlemania in action. And the police tried holding back the fans and, and they wanted to protect the Beatles as best they could. And they even, I, I think at some point, they even had to call in like a mounted unit to come in with horses to try to quell the crowd a little bit. It was just absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy. They got more people called in, but I mean, the Beatles only played like 30 minutes, so by the time they got enough, per like, get more bodies in here, we need some more help. Get some horses in here to quell the crowd. It was absolutely crazy, crazy. It was wide, wide open. And how, how do you do it? How do you calm a crowd like that? They, the people were fainting. They had to take people out on ambulances because they fainted, and a couple of people got hurt. And the Beatles were even kind of funny from the crowd, uh, from the stage. 
Um, I've read some quotes where they're up there and they're like getting a little bit nervous. If you read about how they felt, they were like, oh, gee, you know, they were near the end of this tour. They were burned out. They had enough, you know, get us out of here. John saying things to the audience like, ah, we really like to continue now, play the next song. If you'll stop playing football on the field, he said that. <laughs> and then he said something else like, for those of you still alive, this is our song from, <laughs> anyway, funny stuff. Even Paul got in on the action right at the end near the last song. He goes, well, thanks, everyone, for coming, uh, even you football players. <laughs> so they took note of what was happening, the craziness that was going on out here with hundreds of fans rushing the stage trying to get close to them. You know, it's funny when you hear this story about what happened at City Park Field in New Orleans on that tour, but it's kind of sad, too, because how did, how did the – public safety officials screw it up so bad, such poor planning <laughs> to keep the fans safe, to keep the Beatles safe, to keep themselves safe. How do they screw that up so bad? It's just unbelievable. Thankfully, the fans were held back enough that the Beatles were eventually able to finish their set. They protected the Beatles and they maintained as best control they could to get them in the limo at the end of the show and escort them out of the stadium and get them the heck out of there, okay? So it was absolute madness, but it's one of the shows that I just always find very intriguing for the craziness of it and how wrong it all went. It just was a mess. Uh, <laughs> excuse me, I'm coughing here, I'm getting excited, but folks, it's just so funny to me. And uh, look up the uh, City Park Stadium show, September 16th, and the New Orleans uh, stop on their tour. And read as much as you can about it. It's absolutely funny. You can see some pictures. Very few pictures are in existence. But what you can see, you can see what the stadium layout looked like. You can see the stage. This little stage only three feet off the ground. I mean, of course fans are going to rush out of here to go there. I mean, crazy, right? Anyway, folks, I had fun with this one. This one really gets me laughing a little bit. And I'm so not as it happened. It was probably scary. But happy everyone made it out okay. And thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed this little fun trip down memory lane, the Beatles 64 tour. Love you all. Bye-bye.